Finest Fig by Kenneth Opal teaches young children to treat others how you want to be treated. Bibbit the dentist was a very fussy man. He kept his small apartment as neat and clean as his office. If his dog, Marcel, jumped on the furniture, Bibbit was sure to teach him a lesson, except on Bastille Day. The poor animal was not even allowed to bark. One morning, Bibbit met an old woman waiting at his office door. She had a toothache and begged the dentist to help. But you have no appointment, he told her. The woman moaned. Bibbit looked at his watch. <laughs> Perhaps there was time to make a few extra francs. He took her inside and looked in her mouth. This tooth must come out, he said with a smile. When he was done, the dentist said, I will give you some pills to kill the pain. The woman was very grateful. I can't pay you in money, but I have something much better. She took two figs from her pocket and handed them to Bibbit. Figs, he said angrily. These figs are very special, the woman said. They can make your dreams come true. She winked at him and put her finger to her lips. It was clear to Bibbit that the woman was crazy. He set the figs down and took her by the arm. When she reminded him about the pills, he said, I'm sorry, only for paying customers, and shoved her out the door. That evening, Bibbit took his little dog to the park. Poor Marcel loved to sniff the tree, tree trunks and bushes, but whenever he stopped, Bibbit would pull sharply on the leash. Just before going to bed, the dentist had a small snack. He sat on his dining room table and ate one of the figs the old woman had given him. It was delicious, possibly the finest, sweetest fig he'd ever had. In the morning, Bibbit dragged Marcel down the stairs for his morning walk. The steep steps were hard and were hard for the short-legged dog, but Bibbit wouldn't think of carrying his pet. He hated to get Marcel's white hairs all over his beautiful blue suit. As he walked along the, uh, along the crowded sidewalk, Bibbit could not help but notice people looking at him. They're admiring my suit, he thought. But when Bibbit saw his reflection in the window of the cafe, he stopped in horror. He was dressed in only his underwear. The dentist turned and ran to an alley. Sick or blue, he thought. What has happened to my clothes? But then he remembered the dream he had last night. In his dream, he stood in front of that very cafe, dressed in his underwear. Something else had happened in his dream, and Bibbit struggled to recall it. Marcel, looking out from the shadows of the alley, began to bark. The dentist looked up and saw the rest of his dream come true. No one noticed Bibbit as he ran in his underwear. All the eyes of Paris were fixed on the Eiffel Tower, which slowly drooped over as if it were made of soft rubber. Bibbit understood now that the old woman or that the old woman with the figs had told him the truth. He would not waste a second fig. Over the next few weeks, as reconstruction of the Eiffel Tower began, the dentist read dozens of books on hypnotism. Each night before he went to sleep, he gazed into a mirror and whispered over and over, Bibbit is the richest man on earth. Bibbit is the richest man on earth. Soon in his dreams, that's exactly what he was. As he slept, the dentist saw himself steering a speedboat, flying his airplane, and living luxury on the Rivera. Night after night, it was the same. One evening, Bibbit took his second flick from his cupboard. It would not last forever. Tonight, he thought, is the night. He put the ripe fruit on a dish and set it on the table. Tomorrow, he would be the richest man in the world. He looked down at Marcel and smiled. The little dog would not be coming along. In his dreams, Bibbit had great dames. As the dentist reached into his cupboard to take out some cheese, he heard the crash of breaking china. He turned to see Marcel standing on the chair with his front paws on the table, chewing the last of the fig. Bibbit was furious. He chased the dog around the apartment. When Marcel ran beneath the bed, Bibbit yelled at him, Tomorrow I'll teach you a lesson you never forget. Then the dentist, angry and heartbroken, went to sleep. When he woke up the next morning, Bibbit was confused. He was not in his bed. He was beneath it. Suddenly a face appeared in front of him. His own face. Time for a walk, it said. Come to, Marcel. A hand reached down and grabbed him. Bibbit tried to yell, but all he could do was bark. Oh!